What is going on people? I go by Civil, and today we're going to be breaking down how I made Red Dress. This song is about love, heartbreak, betrayal, but more importantly it's based on one of the best movies ever made called The Room. This song is also a collaboration with one of my good friends, Jobby the Hong. If you have not done so already, you can check out the song, links in the description. As for a little backstory about the song, it all started at a grocery store parking lot with some of my buddies. <laughs> we had an idea to make a song about The Room, but not explicitly say it's about The Room. So pretty much have the lyrics consistently quoting the movie, but also be relatable to anybody that hasn't seen the movie because it's about a common subject, love. So with all that being said, let's dive right in. So when I initially started writing this song, I wrote the chord progression that I liked, but I originally had it on a different uh, key. So this is how it goes right now, like on the piano. But originally I actually had written it right here. So with these chords, I pretty much just got a famous line from the movie and just sang it to those. So it goes something like this. Everybody betray me. I am so fed up with this world. Oh, everybody betray me. I'm so fed up with this world. With this chord progression being done. And having that vocal melody, I decided to mess around with the vocoder, try to make it funky, you know, just see how it'll go. So I ended up using uh, just a normal 3x oscillator and some, where is it? Vocodex. That simple. And before I go any further, I do want to apologize because I did lose the original vocoder sample. So I had to try to recreate it a bit. Um, it doesn't sound exactly the same, but it's similar enough, I want to say. And let me just solo these vocoders, and this is how it sounds. So as you can see, those are... It's already exported because that's pretty much how I ended up making it, but... Um, the original vocoder had this progression under it, and you can see the notes it's doing here, and then it had my actual vocal line. But this is the recreated one, so that's pretty much how it sounds. And then I have the volume just like um, a little side chain every time it, it hits those O's. So now pretty much having that vocoder and the chord progression I wanted to do, I quickly went ahead and started with like just a normal piano. Let's just, you know, lay down a pattern. And it just repeats that, honestly. So with the vocoder and the piano. Once I pretty much had this vocoder and this chord progression with the piano, I decided to kind of write like a funky lead and I actually ended up really liking what came out. And I could show you right here in this intro part. Also for the lead, I just use a G normal GMS and it's routed to track 11 right here. You can see what effects I have on there right there if you're, in if you're interested. And pretty much afterwards, I ended up adding um, the bass line also following like the melody and trying to keep it um, with that groove, you know, add some swing to it right here too. So you can hear it come in right here. Yeah, um, pretty much after all this intro part, what I ended up doing to try to make it progress and make it sound a little different, even though it's doing the same exact thing over and over, um, I ended up switching the instruments. So for the bass line that I just showed you guys, it goes like this. Then right here. As you can see, it's a different instrument. Um, 
it's a different bass style, I guess. The reason I did this is because I wanted it to be less sharp and then also have leave room for the vocals. Same thing with the piano, you can see here. Again, it's a different sound for the same exact reason. Um, this one right here is like a little bit sharper. And then it gets cleaner. Just a little lighter so it can leave room for the vocals. And then it just repeats that pattern over and over. And then you already heard what the uh, lead is doing. It just does a little stabs and then has a little fill every now and then. Repeats that for the verse. And you can also see that I have some volume automation going on. So it goes down right here. And then it only comes in um, all the way full volume at the, at the fills. And that's for the lead. And for all of the verse, there's no vocoder playing, but let me talk about the drums, actually. So we have right here a kick. Uh, what else we got? Snare. We have a snap. Uh, what else do we got over here? We have some hi-hats. Some open hi-hats. Some simple transition. And some, uh, what are these called? Rides. And honestly, that's about it. I did not make this uh, complicated at all. It's just very simple drum pattern that goes like this. Super simple. And then in the chorus, all the sharper instruments that I spoke about earlier come back. So it's just kind of like louder overall. Pretty much. Um, after the chorus, we pretty much have um, this like slower part that similar to how I left some parts unfinished in Slow Man no Uta, I intended to come back to this, but I never did because it just kind of grew on me. And I'm specifically talking about this piano roll right here. Like that. I didn't really like that, but I knew I wanted a slow part, so I kind of just added this um, placeholder and ended up leaving it. And we have these pianos under it. The slower part right here pretty much just leads into the jobby rap, and all the instrumentation is doing the same exact thing though as like it's just like a normal verse. So this pretty much covers all the instrumentation and the drums and the vocoder. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, but then I exported everything and I pretty much mixed and mastered the vocals in a different project file. So let me open that right up. So this project file looks a lot more um, complicated, but it really isn't. Um, what I did here, I imported all the individual elements of the song. So like all these kicks right here, it's just one long file now. All the way across the song. So another thing I did here was the pianos. I pretty much duplicated them and panned one all the way left and one all the way right so it could be more stereo. Same thing with the, the hi-hats, split them up, duplicated them and panned them differently. And this is where the jobby vocals came in. Unlike the Swivel Man no Uta where I had a lot of takes and a lot to work with, this one I only got one real take from jobby. So I had to kind of do my best to kind of make it sound full. So if we get into it, we can see that this is how it sounds alone, the main vocal. You look so sexy in that red dress. You know I bought these flowers for you. For seven years you were my princess. Now look at what you're making me do. But what I did do is have backups that kind of interject every now and then and have more effects on them and like reverb and delay and stuff like that. So we can listen to this first line again and you can see with this backup right here. You look so sexy in that red dress. red dress You know I bought these flowers for you For seven years you were my princess, princess. 
Now look at what you're making me do. So it pretty much just fills in some of the empty space in between the, the lines. And I do that consistently throughout the song. I also have um, quote unquote backup vocals, but it's still the same take um, underneath all that. And you can hear that here. So sexy in that red dress. You know I bought these flowers for you. So you can hear that it's pretty much just the main vocals exported and duplicated into four of them right here. And what what's going on is that I have them panned like this one's all the way left. This one's all the way right. Then I have one that's almost all the way left and then one that's all, almost all the way right. So with all together. So sexy in that red dress. You know I bought these flowers for you. There's not even much of a difference, but it works in the context of like the whole song. So during the slow part, we actually have like a little harmony Javi does too. And I can show you what I mean right here. Everyone could love each other. Everything would be fine. You know they say love is blind. Right here. Love is blind. That alone just sounds like this. Blind, blind. That sounds uh, pretty good. And this leads right into the rap. And <laughs> this one, I did a similar trick with the backup vocals, but just did it once with more of a offset on it and also a little bit of pitch. But it's um, lower volume, so it's kind of a little subtle. And let me show you that. Funny thing about this rap, actually, um, Jobby ended up writing the lyrics on an airplane. I, I don't remember if we were going to Seattle or coming back from like Portland or something, but he ended up writing this on the airplane, and I remember that. Yeah, and this last line originally sounded a little different, but this was one of the redos. So I can actually show you originally what it's supposed to do. So for reference, let's hear what he does right now. To me. Right? It sounds good. But let me show you what he had originally that he didn't like, so we have to redo. To me. So that's pretty much the entirety of the song. I pretty much ended up trying to mix and master this and over I overthought it way too much. And I kept having different versions of it and we ended up putting out one of the older versions of the song. The final version that I actually ended up making sounded not as good as one of the older ones, so we ended up putting just putting out an older one. That's pretty much all there is to the song. It's a really simple song, and Javi did a great job on the vocals. I had a lot of fun making it. I had fun experimenting with vocoders. I haven't done that before. So I hope you liked the song. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. Yeah.